Okay, quick disclaimer before the video. I meant to put this before the Bears prediction video, um, but I just kind of kept talking. I kept putting out stats and facts, um, you know, and it kind of turned into a 10-minute video. It wasn't my intention. I'm still going to be putting out the Bears video at some point today, um, but I did not want to put this in front of the Bears video and have it be a 20 or 30-minute video. Um, so, you know, if you want to watch this rant, um, basically just talk about the Lions being um, a better team than people give them credit for. Um, if not, then I'll see you guys in the Bears video. Enjoy this video if you're watching it. And if not, you know, I'll see you guys later. Bye. All right, guys, welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Um, the last couple of weeks, we've been going over the roster and the rookies and doing a deep dive into every position, every player on the Detroit Lions. Um, and now that we've done that, now that we know what the roster looks like, I want to shift my gaze to the 2020 season. And uh, obviously, we have the schedule. We know who we're going to play. We know when we're going to play them. Um, and I want to do a video every day. Um, you know, talking about a different game going from week one to 17, um, you know, just talking what I think is going to happen, what, um, you know, what I expect to happen. Um, but before we get into the video, I have a couple things. First, obviously, if you are new to the channel, consider, and you, if you're new to the channel and are enjoying the content, consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel and sharing with a Lions fan. Um, and then the second thing, um, the beginning of this video is going to be kind of ranty because I want to get something, you know, out into the open. Um, and you know, I just, I want to explain my thinking behind the Detroit Lions. I want to explain why, um, you know, why I pick the way that I do. And I want to show that I am not biased. Um, so if you don't want to listen to this, if it's going to be kind of ranty, kind of long and just me talking about the Detroit Lions. Um, so if you want to listen to that, feel free to stay. Um, if not, I'll put a timestamp in the corner of where you can skip to for my NFL, you know, prediction for week one against the Bears. Um, but I think that NFL fans, like the average NFL fan, even the average Lions fan, um, has painted a narrative for the Detroit Lions, and that narrative is that the Detroit Lions are a horrible franchise. The Detroit Lions can never contend with the big dogs of the NFL. Um, they're never going to win the North. They're never going to win anything um, important. Um, they're just not a very good franchise, and they had never have been. Um, and, you know, if you look at base stats in the Matt Patricia era, we got 6-10, and 3-12-1. Obviously, we have not had a winning record under Matt Patricia. Um, we've never won the NFC North as long as it has been a thing. The Lions have not won it. Um, they've never been NFC North champions. Um, and, you know, looking at that, you would say the Lions are not a good franchise. Um, but the, you know, that isn't necessarily the case. Um, you know, before Matt Patricia, we had Jim Caldwell as our coach. And under him, we had an 11-5 and five season, two 9-7 and seven seasons, and a 7-9 and nine season. Um, so each of his seasons was better than anything Matt Patricia has done so far, um, which makes me wonder why we even cut him in the first place, why we released him as our head coach, because he was doing good things for the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, we went to the playoffs two or three times in his four years in Detroit. Um, you know, we were a perennial playoff contender, and why we never won the North, we were always second in the North. I mean, second or third. We were never bottom dwellers in the NFC North under Jim Caldwell. You know, we... We're always pushing for that number one spot. We were always contending for NFC North champions. It just happened to be that, you know, the Packers, you know, the year we went 11 and 5, the Packers went 12 and 4. Uh, the years we went 9 and 7, we had people go 13 and 3, and we had teams go, you know, 10 and 6 and just beat us out for that NFC North uh, title by one game or a tiebreaker. Um, you know, it's just, it's the Lions have had some bad luck go their way in the past. They're a very unlucky franchise. I mean, I'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, they just, they have, they're not a horrible franchise. They compete every single week. Um, you know, they don't get blown out ever. Um, you know, they're always in the game. They're always competing no matter who is on the field for them. Um, and I think that, you know, the fact that everybody thinks that the Lions are this horrible franchise that can't win anything is, is incorrect. You know, we are not a horrible franchise. Uh, we've been to the playoffs in recent years. We've been to the playoffs, you know, several times in the 2010s. Um, and I think we'll be back there in the 2020s. Um, and I just don't think that it's fair. I think the Lions get a lot of unfair criticism that they don't deserve. Um, you know, obviously last year wasn't a great year, but, you know, overall. But if you look at the first eight games before, you know, Stafford got injured with our starting quarterback in the game with a majority healthy roster, um, you know, the Lions were not that bad. Um, so obviously week one, we played the Cardinals and we tied 27 to 27, but the Lions dominated 90% of that game. Um, you know, the first 50, 55 minutes of the game, the Lions absolutely dominated the Cardinals. Um, they weren't giving up an inch. They were scoring touchdowns. They were driving. They were draining the clock. You know, they were getting stops on defense. They were forcing some turnovers. Um, and in the end, they just collapsed. Um, you know, that I'm not going to give any excuses for the Lions. They 
should have won that game. They were the better team, and they just gave up points at the end that they should not have. They collapsed at the end, which is a very, you know, not good thing. I'm not making excuses for that, but the Lions were the better team in that game. Um, you know, moving into week two against the um, the Los Angeles Chargers, um, we won that game 13-10. to 10. And last two years ago, the Chargers were 12-4. and four. They were contenders for the Super Bowl, and they lost to the Patriots, I believe, in the divisional round. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, they were a very good team last year, and they un, um, they underperformed. Um, you know, they did not have a good season, but they still had a great offense. They still had great weapons. They still had a very good team. Um, you know, in the Lions, it was a very defensive-heavy um, battle for the whole game, and the Lions came out on top. Um, week three against the Eagles, we won again. We won 27-24. to um, you know, we, you know, per, we led most of that game. Um, you know, we came up with some big defensive stops at the end of the game and the, the Eagles were a playoff team. They were, they lost in the divisional round or the wild card. They lost in the wild card round to the Seahawks, um, who were a very good team. Um, and they didn't lose by that much. Um, you know, the Eagles are a very well run franchise, as I think most people will admit. Um, and we you know we beat them in week three, um, going into week four, you know, the Lions were undefeated. They lost to the Kansas City Chiefs, 30 to 34. You know, it came down to the final play of the game. Um, it came down to a Hail Mary on the last, you know, take of the clock. The Lions were still in the game, and the Chiefs went on to win the Super Bowl. So we competed with the Super Bowl champions down to the final play. Um, you know, week five, we went up against the Green Bay Packers, who were in the NFC Championship game. We led for 60 minutes. We led for every single second that was on the clock in both games. And, you know, it, you know, poor penalties gave the Packers a win, basically. We should have won that game. The Lions were the better team. The Lions dominated the game. They they were winning for every second of the game. They were winning for all 60 minutes. And Mason Crosby happened to kick a last-second field goal. That should never have happened because the refs called poor penalties on the Detroit Lions. And people can say, oh, the Lions should have scored better. But the Lions should not have to be perfect. The Lions should not have to play a perfect game to you know, avoid stupid penalties that should not be called by the referees. Um, but, you know, we were the better team in that game. Um, week six against the Vikings, we lost 42 to 30. Um, we lost by 12 points. Um, that one, I don't, you know, there is no excuse for that one. The Vikings were a better team in that game. Um, but the Lions con uh, contended for the, you know, majority of that game. The Lions, um, you know, the Lions were in it until pretty much the last drive of the um, last offensive drive of the Vikings, um, you know, and then after that, it was kind of over. Um, you know, the Lions played good on offense. They played very poorly on defense. Um, that one, the Lions just lost. The Lions were not the better team in that game, and I think that one was fairly deserved. Um, but, you know, that's the first game in week six that the Lions were not the better team on the field. Um, week seven, we played the Giants and we won. Uh, we were leading the whole game. We didn't even have our top running backs, um, and we still were able to win pretty convincingly. Um, you know, we dominated the game. We were the better team that game, and we won. Um, in Week 8 against the Las uh, Vegas Raiders, um, you know, we played good. Um, we had a couple unfortunate turnovers that should not have happened, um, and even that play came down to the final play of the game, and the Raiders were competing for a playoff spot in, um, you know, in Week 17, they had a chance to make the playoffs. Um, so they were a very good team last year. The Lions were not horrible last year. The Lions competed with every single play, uh, every single team um, before Matthew Stafford went down, and they even competed after. You know, a lot of games that the Lions played came down to one possession games. Um, you know, we've all heard the stat that the Lions led in almost every single game. They just couldn't finish. And some of the free agents that we brought in, some of the veterans are going to help us finish out games. Um, and I think that that is going to be very helpful for the Detroit Lions. Um you know, I think that that is very helpful. Um, you know, I think that the Detroit Lions can come back next season and absolutely compete if they can stay healthy. Um, as I just showed you, every single game the Lions played in last year um, with Matthew Stafford, except with the exception of one or two games, um, you know, they were the better team on the field. Um, you know, I, you know, the they probably weren't the best against the Chiefs. Uh, they probably weren't better than the Vikings last season. Um, but they were better than the Cardinals. They were better than the Bears. They were better than the uh, Packers, the Chargers, the Eagles. Um, you know, I would argue to the Giants. I would argue that they were even better than the Raiders. Um, you know, 
we competed. We should have won a lot more games last year. And if Stafford was healthy and the defense could finish games, we would have been a very good team. We would have contended for playoffs and maybe even the division. Um, you know, maybe not the division because the Packers would have gone, even if they lost to us both times, which they should have, they still would have gone 11-5. and five. So I think they would have probably won the division still. But the Lions had a chance, and I think they still have a chance to win the North. I think that they're a very good football team. And I think that they have, you know, they can definitely win the NFC North next season. They're not a bad franchise. They compete every single week. And if you're not prepared for the Lions, they will beat you because um, they are a good team. They're better than a lot of the teams. They're better than what they played as last season. And they're better than a lot of teams that they're playing this season. So um, I was going to put this rant before the Bears video, but, um, you know, this is getting kind of long. I didn't expect this to be a 10 minute video already. Um, so I'm just going to put this out and I'll put the Bears one out a little bit later. I have it all written down. I don't have to do any research for the Bears. Um, so I'm just going to make this right after I upload this video. Um, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. But, you know, I just wanted to get this off my chest. I kind of wanted to get this out in the open. Um, you know, I'm not being biased on grading these. I genuinely think that the Lions have a very solid roster. Um, you cannot point out any real huge holes in the roster right now. Um, and I think that the Lions have a very complete roster. I think that they're going to compete next season. Um, and it is not bias I'm talking. Um, it is facts. I go off of, you know, what the scores were last year if we played them, um, who ex who additions were, who, um, you know, subtractions were from the team. Did either team get significantly better or worse? Um, and that's how I base my decision. I, and, you know, a little bit goes into feeling, but a lot of it goes into stats and, you know, analytics. So, um, you know, I just want to put that out there. Um, I appreciate everybody's support. If you watch this video, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, if not, I understand it's kind of just a rant, but um, I wanted to get this out into the open before I start doing the, um, you know, record predictions, you know. So um, I will see you guys in a little bit when I film the, vi uh, the Bears video, um, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.